We live in a society that prizes education, thoughtfulness, and the life of the mind. And many people assume that Christianity does not properly value the importance of reason, logic, and plain common sense. Most people think that Christian faith is irrational. It's just a blind leap in the dark. As Mark Twain once quipped, faith is believing what you know ain't so. And you should never believe anything without good reason. So here's the question. Is Christianity irrational? Is faith in Jesus opposed to reason? First of all, let's level the playing field and acknowledge that we all believe deeply in things that we can't prove. From basic assumptions about our mind's ability to perceive reality, to our highest ideals and aspirations. For example, though there's plenty of evidence, I can't prove that my mother loves me in the same way that I can demonstrate that 2 plus 2 always equals 4. And in a similar way, we can't appeal to some sort of universal reason when it comes to our vision of the good life or what we perceive to be virtuous or beautiful. So whether you're a Christian or an atheist, we all rely on faith of some kind to make our way through the world. So what do Christians mean by faith? Well, I'd like to suggest that Christianity doesn't ask us to put blind faith in God against all the evidence. Rather, we're called to put our trust in God because there are good reasons for doing so. Let me offer this illustration. In 1859, Charles Blondin became the first person to walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. 25,000 people showed up for the stunt, and most of the smart money bet that he was doomed to plunge 200 feet to a watery death below. He set out from the American side shortly before 5 p.m., and when Blondin was one-third of the way across, he sat down on the cable and then signaled for the famous Maid of the Mist to anchor beneath him. He let down a rope to the ship below, and then he hoisted up a bottle of wine in order to enjoy a glass before getting up and then running the rest of the way across the falls. On his return trip, he carried a camera and a tripod on his back and stopped to snap a photo of the crowd on the American side before completing his 23-minute journey. No one thought it could have been done, but Blondin not only did it once, he held a number of encore performances that summer. On one occasion, he walked across the rope backwards. On another, he wore a sack over his entire body, which blindfolded him. He once somersaulted and backflipped his way across and then returned another time, pushing a wheelbarrow. After everything that people had seen, you could imagine Blondin asking, do you believe that I am capable of pushing someone in the wheelbarrow across the falls? And at this point, most people would have said, yes. And do you agree that what I'm doing is real and not some kind of a trick? And again, most people would agree that this was no charade. But imagine if he asked someone to get inside the wheelbarrow. Would you have done it? Well, believe it or not, at the end of that summer, Blondin walked across Niagara Falls carrying his manager, Harry Calcord, on his back. Now, I'd like to suggest that this illustrates the essence of faith. Theologians talk about three dimensions of faith, knowledge, assent, and trust. First, there's knowledge. You have to know something about God and Jesus. Faith is not irrational or blind. It's based on what we can know. We're supposed to consider the claims that Jesus has made about himself in the scriptures and the ways in which he has acted in the past according to the original witnesses. Just as Charles Blondin demonstrated his mastery over the tightrope, before asking anyone to join him on the high wire. So in other words, there's real content to faith based on what Jesus has revealed about himself. And then second, you have to assent. You have to agree that this content is true and not some kind of trick or house of mirrors. And then finally, and most importantly, there's trust. You have to personally trust Jesus. It's not enough to know a claim and assent to its truth. You've got to do something about it. You have to place yourself in the wheelbarrow. So here's the simplest way I could put it. Faith involves a transfer of trust. To be a Christian means that you transfer your trust from yourself to Jesus, for your life, your future, your standing before God. Rather than relying on yourself, your record, your ability, your performance, you rely on Jesus, his record, his ability, his performance for your relationship with God. So what is faith? Faith consists of knowledge, assent, and above all, trust. 
But this faith is not opposed to reason. Rather, it is tested by reason. And that's why Jesus encourages us to open ourselves up to the surprising ways in which God might be at work in our world and to follow the evidence wherever it leads. I'd love to hear from you. And in fact, that'd be a great help to me. I wanna know what's on your mind. So if you have questions or comments about what I've shared, or if there are other topics you'd like me to address, leave a comment below or send me an email at seniorpastor at centralchurchnyc.org. Thanks for watching.